how to become a stronger cyclist. It all has to do around building literally physical strength. I'm always nervous to say that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Traniacs, 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 traniacs. Oh. Whoa. Mm. Okay, that was a brick workout. And a hell of a brick workout at that. Be with you in one minute. I'll give you an unsuccessful connection, Garmin. All right, brick workout. 85K of biking in two hours and 40 minutes two hours and 30 minutes of moving time. I had 10 minutes at the start where I was having trouble with the new bike. Just dialing it in. And then a 6K run in 26.20 miles. That is about a 53 mile ride and a 3.8 mile run. And it's the middle of the afternoon, so it's just soupy humid. Okay, I'm back. On to how to become a stronger cyclist. First, a giant smoothie and a shower. All right, 1,000 calories and a shower later, and I'm just about back, Traniacs. So, getting stronger on the bike. I don't mean to brag or nothing, but power numbers are pretty high right now. So that said, how do you go about building bike strength? Number one, time in the saddle. I've said it many times before, but the really nice thing about biking is that it's not like swimming where it's all about technique. It's not like running where a lot of it has to do with fitness and biomechanics. Literally, it's like a perfect one-to-one -one correlation that time in the saddle makes you stronger on the bike, straight up. And it's not even just like time in a time trial saddle. It can be commuting. I find commuting helps. The road biking that I do for an hour and a half on Tuesday and Thursday that is like crazy intense, while it's not triathlon specific, that makes me a better rider. And then just the one purposeful long endurance bike in the aero bars on the weekend starts forming that strength in the TT position. Time trial. Okay, now the second, third, Fourth thing, yada, 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 that you can do. It all has to do around building literally physical strength. So the number two thing that I had in my mind was the single leg pedaling drills that Pat got me to do. The pedal stroke is ideally a perfect circle. You're pulling up just as much as you're pushing down. That's really efficient. But typically people don't tend to pull up. They don't tend to pull back. And the only way to overcome that is to ingrain in your muscle memory what a perfect pedal stroke is. And often doing single leg pedaling drills where you unclip one shoe, put it on like say the back seat stay and pedal with the other leg, it gets that motion of a perfect pedal stroke in your brain. The next thing that you can do is really high gear work. Typically you wanna be cycling at around like 90 to 95 revolutions per minute. Knock that down for a while to like 50, 60, 70 revolutions per minute, that's gonna be really hard to push over, but it's gonna be working on bike specific strength work because you're pushing so much more power. The third strength thing, fourth idea is high cadence. Doing really high cadence, teaching your legs how to spin really fast. And we're talking a cadence of 110 and higher. Doing that is the exact opposite of that low gear work, but it gives your legs a deep amount of fitness where you can do low gear work, you can do high gear work, you can do steady gear work in that 90 to 95. You've got basically a really broad spectrum of fitness, really deep fitness. So you're not just working one muscle group, one cardiovascular or anaerobic muscle system, fast twitch, slow twitch, you're gonna work everything and it's gonna make you a more well-rounded cyclist, which means you're a stronger cyclist. Now the fifth overall thing that you can do, fourth thing about strength, is doing eccentric 
No. Concentric? No. Decentric? I can't remember what it is. If you're doing strength work in the gym, let's say that you're doing a deadlift, and deadlifts have been studied a lot for endurance athletes, runners, cyclists specifically, you want to be doing the up portion with really, really heavy weights and a long period of rest and low reps. And you might even consider not even letting the weight down with your body, but just dropping it. And what the studies have shown is that the up builds power, but the down is what builds mass. And you don't want to be building mass. You want more power with the same weight because then your power to weight ratio is a lot better. You're able to put out more power, but you're pushing the same amount of weight. But with all this said, all your strength workout has to be a long way away from race season. By the time race season comes around, you wanna be doing work like what I'm doing right now, where you're doing work in and around race pace, maybe slightly over race pace, maybe getting up to your FTP, like your max threshold effort, but only for about five, 10 minutes. You wanna be getting everything into building that locomotive train in and around your race pace because it just takes too much out of your body to be getting ready for race pace while at the same time building your strength up. If you look at Coach Pat's training plans, at triathlonterran.com forward slash coaching, you'll see that there is a little bit of strength work, but it's way at the beginning of the plan. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's it. My mouth of all mumbly from that long workout. Check it out. Now I gotta go and tell Coach Pat how that workout went. And I'm not sure if I wanna write down what I wanna write down. So I've shown you this a few times. This is Coach Pat's training plan for me. And what we do is, it's not just here's your training plan, sucka, go try and do it. Every single day I put in my levels of motivation today, really high. My levels of recovery, meh. My levels of sleep, awesome. My workout, hard, really hard. Thanks, Pat. And then the last thing that I do is if there are comments on a workout that I have in my brain that I wanna talk about with Pat, I put them in here and then we go back and forth and this is how we tailor the training plan week by week, month by month because he's watching my levels of motivation and how I'm receiving the workouts. Here's what I'm writing down that I think is the right thing to do, but it's a scary thing to do. Power numbers are feeling pretty easy. I'm always nervous to say that. Holding the old race pace from previous FTP tests results in a very easy feeling pace and flirting around the previous FTP number also feels easy. Here's what I might come to regret. Should we do another FTP test to see where I'm at? FTP tests are awful, they're just awful. And then, Sometime later today or tomorrow, Pat will read that and he'll think, well, you know, maybe we should just punish Taryn for 20 minutes later this week. I might live to regret this later though. So there you go, Trainiacs. That's it. I think it's a, I think it's a dinner, um, dinner with friends kind of night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna go.